and this is what we thought. I mean, I should be under a metre and a half of water here, not on a quad bike. This is just ridiculous. I mean, and, and no one cares. But some people do. The dying of the Murray River deeply worries experts like Mike Young from Adelaide University. We made the mistake of assuming the drought would come for one or two years and then we'd go back to an old wet regime. As a result of that, we ran our dams down too quickly. We started closing off all the wetlands to keep on trying to find more and more water. We found every last drop, but we have run everything down so far below empty, we're now in serious strife. The acidity of the water in some stretches of the Lower Murray is now so strong it will soon be virtually unusable. At some stage, in the, possibly in the very near future, the entire system is going to become undrinkable. River is a living system, and it's just like your own body system. You put something in here, and it collects all the stuff and dirt and all the rubbish and everything, and then it gets down to this point down here, and you've got to flush it out. If you don't flush out what's in your body system, and you block it off, it will build back up and it will take out your liver, your kidneys, your lungs, everything as it goes. It'll be like a cancer and it'll just eat up, just take everything out as it goes back up. It'll be slow but it'll take all the rural communities and it'll take the towns, cities like Adelaide. Oh, I just think it's a disgrace. But the cancer has started to spread. Its effects are already being felt in Adelaide. The city's 1.3 million inhabitants are heavily dependent on the Murray River. As the river dries out, so does the city. On the radio station, water is a hot topic. Good morning, I'm Matthew Abraham. I'm David Bevan. Are you happy with the way the state government has been handling the water issue? Because it's state governments that are in the business of delivering water. We would love to hear from you. Are you happy or aren't you happy? I can't remember having any conversation with any friend where the conversation hasn't turned to water. First caller, good morning to you. Richard of Adelaide. Hello, Richard. Good morning, gentlemen. It's a state government issue to solve the problem, and yet the problem is a national, or in fact an international and global issue in terms of climate change. Richard, thank you for your thoughts. Mark's called for the Riverland. G'day, Mark. On the other side of town, Michael Zamet and Stephanie Brown, like all Adelaide families, are adjusting to life with less water. We've got water restrictions for the first time in my living memory. We can only water our garden um, by hose on a Sunday and a Wednesday because we're an odd a numbered home. You know, you don't go out because you have to go home and water your garden. I've never heard of that before. And so in the past, people used to be out in the front watering their garden. Now you don't see anybody watering their garden. Yeah, socialising. Everyone used to be out. It's such a shame because all the lawns were really quite yeah. lush, weren't they? And all the parklands were really, really green. And now they're all really brown and, and unpleasant. It really has changed oh, it has. the whole atmosphere of Adelaide. The citizens of Adelaide have to find inventive ways of saving water. You then jump in the shower, you make sure the buckets are there, uh, getting all the water that it possibly can. When you finish, two buckets later, down the stairs, and you have a look at the dry patches on the lawn or where it needs to be watered, and that's where you put the water. Michael and Stephanie also recycle the wastewater from their dishwasher and washing machine onto their garden. If we get a second chance, we'll never take water for granted. I will never take it for granted. To me, it's as precious as, as petrol or oil. Australians are among the most urbanised people on Earth. 90% of them live in cities. But as the world gets warmer, life in cities will become harder to sustain. With no rainfall to rely on, the government is turning to a radical solution. A desalination plant which treats seawater and makes it drinkable. This plant will supply half of Adelaide's water, but it's an expensive and energy intensive option. I find it regrettable that Adelaide has had to go to a desalination plant. 
I would have loved to have seen the city investing much more recycling of water and in capture of stormwater and dropping it into storage. Adelaide ended up with a desalination plant because we didn't plan early enough. But is the battle already lost? In September 2009, plans were made to deliver bottled water to hospitals, old people's homes and supermarkets on some stretches of the Murray because there is simply not enough water to drink. I would urge every country around the world to come and look at Australia and learn how not to plan for climate change and by doing that, learning from our mistakes, to work out what has to be done to survive this horrible problem the world seems to be wrestling with. Climate change is here to stay and will only intensify. Drought is taking hold not only in Australia, but also in America. Water is being rationed worldwide, from Nepal and India to Mexico and China. In just 10 years, the Gaza Strip will run out of water that is fit for human use. To avoid this crisis, water must be used responsibly. That is certainly what Salvador Heresi, mayor of San Miguel in Lima, thinks. It is Children's Day, and he's using the occasion to inspire a younger generation. This is a fun day out for the children, but for Salvador, it has serious overtones. El futuro para la humanidad tiene retos importantes y el problema de calentamiento global es una tarea permanente de mi generación como de la generación de mis hijos y los hijos de mis hijos. The authorities in Lima are already taking measures to combat climate change. They're building three plants to recycle sewage water. They may tunnel through the Andes to access new water sources. And like Adelaide, they're considering a desalination plant. Yo creo que es una carrera contra el tiempo, pero es una carrera en la que tenemos que estar acompañados de la población. La población tiene que aprender a ahorrar agua y reducir sus patrones de consumo. No es posible de que en la ciudad de Lima se esté derrochando el agua. En Lima, Magali is already aware of the need to be responsible. Today she's taking her children to a park known as the Magic Circuit of Water. Mira, mi amor. Las aguas es como si estuvieran bailando al ritmo de la música clásica. Mira, ¿te parece? The 13 fountains attract 3 million visitors a year. The water is recycled continuously. Many come to see the magic fountain, which at 240 meters is the tallest in a water park anywhere in the world. Donde hay agua hay vida, ¿no? O sea, es una cosa que te transforma. Es tanta, es tanta agua que no parece que hubiera escasez en ninguna parte, ¿no? O sea, no puede, no es posible que, que se pueda hacer todo esto. Y mientras que en otros lugares, nosotros tenemos que cuidar y contar prácticamente el agua, ¿no? Sería muy hermoso que 
todo en nuestro país o en todo el mundo el agua abundar así de esta manera, ¿no? Nos hace sentir bien, bien desde adentro, ¿no? desde adentro, bien. Sí, es mucha, mucha, mucha agua. In the next episode of Hot Cities, climate change and food, riots break out in Senegal as the price of rice doubles. But researchers and farmers are working on a solution.